Hey, what's up coders? I'm Coderius and today we will get started with Unity. Finally! On my side, I started doing 2D and 3D stuff with the Windows API and DirectX before looking for a game engine because I didn't want to do everything by myself. I quickly came across Unity, which is one of the most popular game engine out there, and I immediately liked it's a simple interface and the integration of Visual Studio to the development environment. Everything works out of the box immediately without too much configuration needed. On top of that, there is an active community of developers with tons of forums, YouTube videos, Discord support channels where we can learn for free. This will be a series with three episodes. This first video will be an introduction to Unity. We will see what is Unity, what we can do with it, and how to create the first project. In the next video, we will look at the details of the interface, the different components, and at the end, you should be able to create a project on your own. Before we start, take a moment to like and subscribe, and I see you in Unity. Unity is a game engine created by Unity Technologies. First announced in June 2005 at the Apple's Worldwide Developers Conference, it started as a Mac OS X-only game engine. Since then, Unity has evolved and supports more than 25 platforms as of today. Unity can be used to create 2D and 3D content, virtual reality and augmented reality games, as well as simulation or just for animation. Ok, but how does it work? And what is a game engine, by the way? A game engine is the environment in which games are developed. It manages the core of the game like rendering the graphics, the physics and collision system, sound, animation, networking, etc, etc, etc. Without a game engine, all functions would have to be coded from scratch by the developers. Big studios are still developing their own game engine, but for indie developers, without the time or the skills to create a full-blown game engine, software like Unity offers a unique opportunity to focus on the user experience and creative content rather than the technical details. With the availability of free game engines and other resources, it's never been a better time to start making games. Of course, if like me you are a hobbyist, it's a lot of fun, but if you want to make games for a living, it means barriers to entry have never been that low, and competition is fierce. Ok, let's get started. The journey begins on the Unity webpage www.unity.com. Unity is kinda free, at least for its individual license. That's pretty much ok for small projects. Typically, if you make less than $100,000 per year with your games, either through sales or other funding, then the license is free, and all content is available. Same if you are a student. Pro versions are a bit more expensive, and offer additional support and online services. These are ideal for small professional teams or for larger studios. To download Unity, go to their website, scroll to the bottom and click on Unity in the download section. Comment if someone from Unity is watching, you could make the download section a bit more evident on your website. What we want to download is the Unity Hub. It helps managing the different projects as well as the versions of Unity. Once the Hub is downloaded and installed, go to the Install section of the Hub. Unity has different versions. The most important version is probably the LTS, which means Long Term Support. This is the latest and most stable version of Unity, which should be preferred if your game is in production or ready to be shipped. At the time of this video, the latest LTS is the LTS 2019. Unity follows a certain roadmap and a naming convention, with now two major releases per year versus three in the past. It works like this. The third or last release of a specific version becomes the LTS. For instance, the 2019 LTS was released in Spring 2020 and was the latest version of the 2019 series. It was followed by the 2020.1 version, released in July 2020, and then by the 2020.2 release, which was launched a couple of weeks ago. We are all expecting the 2020.3 version, which will become the LTS and expected for Spring 2021. It should come together with the next official release, 2021.1, which is now in alpha version. Oh, okay, that's a bit complicated. But to sum up, if you are working on a project, just take the latest LTS version, and if you want to try out the latest technologies from Unity, get the latest official release. When you will be a bit more familiar with Unity, it will be easier to find the best version for your project. Alright, now that you have decided which version is best for your project, it's time to decide on which platform you would like to run your game. I'm developing on Windows, but it does not mean I can only develop for Windows. With Unity, we can develop for mobile, PC, Mac, Linux and consoles. I would recommend to install the support of the platform on which you are developing, like Mac or Windows. Anyway, support for additional platforms can be added at any point in time. I would also install WebGL, which allows you to easily publish a game online and play it via a web browser. WebGL does not support all modern 3D rendering techniques, but it's quite convenient to rapidly share games over the internet. If you develop for mobile, you also have the possibility to select Android or iOS. Unity comes with an emulator to simulate devices. 
Before starting, there is one last thing. Make sure you have set up your development environment. Unity comes with Visual Studio, which is free and works really well with Unity. You can install it directly from the Unity Hub or from the Visual Studio webpage. If you are using the Visual Studio installer, make sure you have checked the right package. The one we are after is Game Development with Unity. Alright, we can now create our first project. In the Project section of Unity Hub, click on New. If you have several versions of Unity installed, you can choose which one to use here. It is also possible to upgrade an existing project to another version. However, there are risks of losing data, so be mindful before changing the version of your project, although I never had any issues doing so myself. You are now asked to choose a template. Again, it is not definitive, as components can be added or removed directly in the project. The template will create a new project and import specific packages beforehand. Let's take a moment to talk about what we see here on the screen. It is quite important to understand how Unity works. The templates are using different render pipelines. This is quite a technical topic and will be covered in another video, but in short, the render pipeline is what brings everything from a specific 2D or 3D scene to the screen. It determines what to render, how to render it, and then apply post-processing effects. Unity has three render pipelines. The built-in render pipeline, which is the default pipeline used in the 2D and 3D templates, the universal render pipeline, or URP, which is a scriptable multi-platform render pipeline, and finally the high-definition render pipeline, or HDRP, which is also a scriptable pipeline and aim at creating cutting-edge, high-fidelity graphics on the most modern machines. The core of creating a game with Unity will be the same whatever pipeline is used in project, but each has different options when it comes to rendering texture, applying post-processing effects and other visual effects such as particles. Alright, let's create a new 3D project using the built-in render pipeline. This is a default empty scene with only a camera and a directional light. The interface can be reorganized according to your own preference. Let's have a brief look at the different windows. On the left, the hierarchy window is the list of all game objects in the scene. I will cover in more detail all these elements in the next video. For now, just remember that objects in Unity are called game objects. The main camera is a game object, the light is a game object, etc, etc. We can left click in the hierarchy and add a new 3D game object, such as a cube. And the cube appears in the middle of the scene. On the right we have the inspector, which gives all the details about the game object that is selected in the hierarchy. In the center of the screen we have two windows, the scene and the game windows. The scene is where we actually create the game. The game window is where we can visualize it like if we were playing the game. On white screen I would prefer seeing both at the same time. So if you have two screens you can also make a good use of them and bring the game window to your second monitor for instance. The project window is where you find all the files of your game. Just one advice here, stay organized. I try to make a folder for each category, like for scripts, for sprites, for the audio, and keep similar things together. Small projects can have only few files, but large projects can have thousands and thousands of files, so without being organized it's just gonna be a mess. Alright, so if we click the cube, the details are showing up in the inspector, and if we move the cube's position in the inspector, the cube will move in the scene, and if we move it in the scene, the inspector values will change. Alright, it's quite a boring scene, but we can click on the play button and start the game to display our wonderful cube. We see that the scene view and the game view are different, and that's because of the camera. So if we move the camera's position, we see the camera moving in the scene, and the view is changing real time in the game view. I'm sure you get the concept. The scene view is what happens behind the scene, where we can do pretty much everything, whereas the game view is actually the game running, almost like the final version of the game taking player's input in real time. Please note that's very important that everything that is changed while the game is running won't be saved once you stop the game. Like if I move the camera to the left and stop the game, the position will reset when the game is stopped. Okay, it's already the end of the video, we've covered quite a lot. In the next video we'll continue exploring the Unity interface, the different game objects and their components, and we'll also write a first c -sharp script to lay the foundations of a minigame. And that's where I'll leave you for today, thank you very much for watching, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell icon if you don't want to miss the next episode. Until then, keep coding and see you next time!